Hi. When we hear of the word fracture, you quickly think of an orthopedic surgeon. But then add the word skull in front of it. And then you know that orthopedic surgeon might not be able to do justice to such fractures. So skull fractures are exclusively dealt with by neurosurgeons. And thankfully for all patients suffering from skull fractures, most of them do not require any surgical procedure. But yes, in some cases, skull fractures do require treatment. And they are very few. And most of it, or in fact, most all of it is not for the fracture per se, but because of the problems being caused because of fracture. To give you an example, a fracture of the base of the skull around the orbit could lead to a small spicule of bone which might be compressing the optic nerve and that would lead to blindness or decrease in the vision. So in such cases it becomes important to remove that spicule from the optic nerve so that the vision improves. Similarly, a fracture along the mastoid or the temporal bone could impinge on the facial nerve causing facial paralysis. So in such cases we have to obviously remove that small spicule or small fragment of bone compressing the nerve. Apart from that, when there is a fracture, at times what happens is there is a tear of the membrane around the brain too, the dura. And that leads to something called as cerebrospinal fluid leak or CSF leak. So most of the leak happens from the nose. So it leads to something called as rhinorrhea, means passage of fluid from the nose. Now when that happens, we need to stop that leak. It is not to repair the fracture. The aim is to repair that dural membrane which has been torn as a result of the fracture. So the dural membrane has to be repaired so that that flow of fluid from the intracranial part to the exterior is controlled or is stopped. Why? The logic is very simple. If there is an opening which leads to the fluid dripping from inside the skull outwards, there is a possibility that something else could enter through the same opening into the brain and that something could be something really sinister like a bacteria leading to infection of the brain or meningitis. So it's very important in such cases to seal that leak. So primarily we are not treating the fracture per se, we are treating that opening. The only place we actually deal with the fracture per se would be a depressed fracture. Now a depressed fracture is a type of fracture where the entire thickness of the skull has gotten fractured and then it's got depressed into the brain. Now what this does is it compresses the brain, causes injury to the brain. Apart from that leaves a cosmetic deformity. So imagine the skull overall has a smooth contour. So you have a sudden depression over there, the skin takes that shape and then overall you have a deformity. And most of these deformities, especially on the forehead, definitely requires treatment. But in some cases, if it is uh, in the parts which is covered by hair well, we can leave it alone as long as the skin is intact. The skin is intact, there is no possibility of infection. So in most cases, we can leave a depressed fracture without being elevated can just leave it like that and it wouldn't cause much of a problem. So to summarize, when it comes to fractures of the skull, few things to be remembered, it's treated by a neurosurgeon and thankfully it doesn't require much treatment. But yes, it is an indicative of the extent of trauma, something which is so forceful that it led to a fracture of the skull indicates that the trauma was quite severe. So we should be aware that the injury or the impact has been severe and we need to keep the patient under observation even though the patient would be conscious that one. And apart from that, there could be other neurological deficits which need to be looked for, especially when we see these fractures at very specific sites. So that's it about skull fractures. Thank you.